are six days away to Elections Day and two days to end early voting. Today on TLC Live, John Lujan, candidate for State Representative District 118, Adam Hinojosa for Texas State Senate District 27, Aurelina Lina Prado, candidate for Behar County Commissioner's Prison 1, and Amanda Sue Frederick, candidate for Jim Wells County Judge. What up, what up? It's your boy, Chingo Bling. Look, if you're tired of the Democrats calling us breakfast tacos one day and counting our votes the next, here's what you can do. Vote on November 8th. It's easy, all right? Find your polling place. Roll up in your mamalona, your minivan, your slab, whatever, and vote Republican. Don't be taken for granted. We're conservative. We're familia. Join us at HarrisCountyGOP.com. Political... I started to run away, not walk away, from the Democratic Party. The RGV has become the epicenter, like the focal point, the boiling point, if I will of politics in America. That was our bus tour, Chingobling bus tour, that we had uh, four days, pretty much. We started on um, Hidalgo County, and then we went to Jim Wells, then Bear County, and then Harris County. And Alice, Texas. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we had a very good bus chauffeur. <laughs> yeah, you were the driver. <laughs> Completely The safe. best driver, the best driver that we have. So that was our bus tour across Texas with the famous Chingle Bling uh, turning out uh, voters. And it was very exciting. Uh, had uh, a lot of media, actually. We had media from Germany. We had media from France. Japan. We had media from Japan. Those guys at the back of the bus pointing to the Chingo uh, sign on the back of the bus. That was the largest Japanese network that's been covering us, and um, we've had Sky News from Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of interest in what's going on in Texas, but our interest is making sure that our Tejanos, uh, Latinos, uh, Hispanics, and for the very few of you that identify as Latinx, come on over and join the Republican Party. Vote for our candidates. Vote your values. Vote conservative. We had a very wonderful, very successful bus tour across Texas. And stay tuned. After the elections, we're not going away. We're going to do a lot of things to encourage our Hispanic community to come our way. We want the Hispanic community in our party. We want the Hispanic community values to shape Texas, which will keep Texas as an entrepreneurial state with low taxes, very conservative for the foreseeable future. So, And as we said at the beginning, we are just six days away from elections and two days only to end early voting. So our candidates are just like working 24-7. And one of those candidates is our first guest is John Luhan. He's a candidate for a state representative district 118. And he is campaigning and he is on his phone today because he is about to have a big, big event. John Welcome, good morning, and tell us, what are you doing today? A lot of exciting things happening over there in, in San Antonio and Bear County. 
You're well, mute. You're muted, John. You're muted, John. I think we lost you. Um, so please sign back. But uh, uh, no, he's he's going to unmute himself here in a minute. Um, John is not only a candidate; he is the state representative for well, District know, yeah. 118. And he, he won is his, to reelect to for reelect. He won his position in a special election the first time that uh, Southern Bear County has elected a Republican. Uh, and uh, he's up for re-election. There's a lot of excitement. In fact, our bus tour stop in San Antonio was at Pica Pica mm -hmm. in, on the south side, and uh, John was kind enough to stop in and, and visit with Chingo Bling, and uh, so I know he's working very hard. He's actually in his car. He's probably working a poll today, so uh, I think we'll get him back in just a few minutes. What, uh, oh, there he's he back. is. Let's see if we get some audio with him. Yeah, because I know we need to. He need to sign yeah. out uh, very soon. So we're not going to keep him long. John, can you hear us? John, can you hear yes, us? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, great. Listen, uh, thanks for taking a few minutes. Uh, what's going on today? Where are you? And tell us uh, any good news that you uh, see in out of Bear County. Well, we're here on the south side today, starting off at this uh, admission library. And uh, Orlando, Andrea, we have the Speaker of the House coming to the south side of San Antonio to, to work the polls here for about an hour or so. Just so grateful to have him, Speaker Phelan, from the Texas House of Representatives, knowing that this is that important of an election. And then the excitement. But I, I cannot, I have to tell you guys thank you, Andrea and Orlando, the bus tour with Chingle Bling. Man, you guys, we, we've got to, I've been preaching this is, that this is a moment in time that we have to grasp, and no better example than TLC doing a bus tour, supporting verbally, monetarily, work ethic, everything that you guys are doing is capitalizing this moment in time. And if, every, if we all just do a little piece, we're going to make the changes that are necessary. Even your lineup of folks that you have here today with – Lena, and I love Adam Hinojosa and the things that he's doing there, and he's flipping that whole seat around. That's incredible what he's doing. Lena is a personal friend of mine. We go to church together. I love her and her family, and um, and then I'm, I'm just thankful for what you guys are doing, and, um, and God bless you guys for what you're doing. And you we're know, doing our part. I can tell you, I know we're working hard. I know you are, John, but uh, Mark had that picture of all of you candidates, and I don't know if he can put that back up. But, you know, this is what I harp about, and this is what I talk about constantly. Uh, the left, the Democrats have called us the party of the racist, the white supremacists. Look at this lineup. Look at this screen. You have, you know, you have a Colombian immigrant. You have a Cuban immigrant. You have a Mexican-American. You have, you know, a Latina from, uh, I guess, uh, Lena, you're, you're from the Caribbean. I mean, you know— Tejanos, Hispanics, this is Texas, guys, what yep. you're seeing. This is the Amen. Republican Party of today. These are conservative candidates that they're talking about their values in their community, and we get asked by the Japanese press, the Sky News, we get asked by the Germans and the French, why is Texas flipping? This is your answer right here. Chingo bling talking to thousands of Texans across the state of Texas, encouraging them to vote their values. Look at these candidates. This has never happened before. A record number of Latinos running for positions in Texas. And, and the example I can give you is Maverick County. We have eight Republicans running. That's never happened. Jim Wells County just opened up their Republican headquarters. They hadn't had one for forever. Things are exciting in Texas. And you know what, um, as uh, we were hearing in the video um, of the Buster that Chingo said, I run, I didn't walk, I run away from the Democratic Party. And he realized that in 2020, and he was telling us a story when he was visiting um, the different cities during the Buster. And also he was saying, and South Texas became the point of the political the political view in in this country, and that's why I never I don't know I haven't been I, I'm not, I don't know I'm not a politician. You've been 25 years in politics, and some of them I don't know what is their background in politics, but I never saw in my time as as a journalist as a reporter that Japan, Germany, France it was you know putting their eyes on South Texas in politics. Yeah. I never saw that before. 
Yeah, and I want to say also, uh, John, you know, you were thanking us for what we do, and we're happy to do it because we love Texas. Uh, we love our community. We want our community to have a bigger voice in the conservative movement in Texas. But let me tell you, this is not us. I mean, uh, you know, we had the idea of creating Texas Latino conservatives, but it's generous Texans across the state that have been funding us because of quality candidates like you guys. And so we have a lot of Texans that, as um, you know, former Senator Phil Graham would say, got out of the wagon and started the pulling the wagon in one direction, and that's to help you guys win. So, John, we're, uh, we're going to let you go. We know uh, t t share any message you want with your voters down in, the, in District 118 in South uh, uh, Bear County. Your call to action. Yes, well, I, can you hear me? Yes. Just fine. Can you hear me? Okay, yep. yes. good, good. What I want to, my biggest call, my biggest call to action is that, is exactly what you guys have said. I love when you put the pictures of all of us up there. Man, different backgrounds, just different things. But this is an attack on our faith, our family, and freedom, right, in our country. And that's what we stand for. And I think because those attacks has just made us all rally around and say, hey, we just can't be in our homes. We can't just be in our churches. We have to get out. And we have to fight. We have to stand up for all of our freedoms and the things that, that made our country great, all these policies that are eroding what made us great. And then instead of trying to fix it, they're implying more of those things. And it's good people stepping up and saying enough's enough. Faith, family, freedom. That's what we're going to defend. That's what we want to put up in the forefront. That's what makes change. So I thank you for giving me this platform, this opportunity. And uh Good luck to all the guests that are on there. I, I know them and, and love them and want to continue. And once again, God bless you, and thank you all for everything you do at TLC. All right. As they say in Hollywood, break a leg, John. We're uh, looking forward to your victory and your reelection. Good luck, John. See you thank soon. Thank you, Orlando. Andrea, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. And also we have, you know, as, as we were seeing the lineup, as Adam Hinojosa, he is from uh, Texas State Senate District 27, and he is a four-generation Texan. And he is going to tell us not only his story, why he's um, uh, running for this uh, position, and what are you doing now? I mean, just, we're two days away uh, to finish early voting, and then general election is going to be on Tuesday, November 8th. Welcome to TLC. Well, thank you so much for having me on today. Uh, thank you for all of your support. Um, it's so important. There's some some wonderful things happening in South Texas, as you saw with my good friend, John Lujan. Started with him several years ago when he first broke that mold um, in South Bear County. Um, and then he rewound uh, again, and, and we need to get him reelected again. But uh, I was just in, uh, came back from Brownsville and Hidalgo County, um, I was with Congresswoman Myra Flores and Tulsi Gabbard, and there was an incredible um, uh, get out the vote, walk away tour, because just like you all said, my, my father, my grandfather, all Kennedy type Democrats, but that party has has long gone and uh, it no longer represents our Hispanic values in South Texas. And so it's an honor and a pleasure to be the Republican nominee for state Senate. Um, this is an opportunity to make history for the first time ever have a Republican hold Texas Senate District 27 since its inception 123 years ago. And, you know, it's not just for the sake of uh, Republican versus Democrat. It's good versus evil is what we're seeing right now. You know, our Hispanic values, uh, our South Texas values are at risk. You know, we are um, a, a party and we are a culture of, of God, family and, and country. And we have to protect those values. Uh, I myself was born in Brownsville, Texas. My family is from uh, the Rio Grande Valley. My grandfather was a farmer in Santa Rosa, served as a deputy sheriff in Cameron County for many years. Um, eventually, my father moved our family to Corpus Christi, where I've now lived for 35 years. I have uh, several small businesses here. Uh, I have a beautiful family, happily married with my wife, Victoria. And we have four beautiful children, ages 2 to 15. So when you want to talk about what qualifies me for state senator, that's it. I'm a father. Uh, and so I understand what is uh, at stake here for our children and, you know, uh, having to put a stop to the sexualization, the indoctrination of our children in our schools to protect them. Um, you know, as a small business owner, I know what's at risk with our small businesses, the um, inflationary policies uh, that the current administration has that uh, 
uh, is crushing and crippling our economies and it's making it harder and harder for all of us to make ends meet. Um, so as a small business owner, I look forward to championing for um, uh, the biggest tax property tax cut in the history of, of Texas. Governor Abbott's already on board with that. Um, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who all, all the, those who have endorsed me already. Um, and, you know, just so, so bringing that experience from a small businessman, um, also as a father. And then I graduated the police academy uh, early on. And instead of, of fully uh, patrolling, I decided to go into business. But I understand public safety and the need to restore the honor and respect to our law enforcement officers and that profession and to ensure that they're fully funded, fully trained and fully equipped for the protection of our communities and our families. Um, so it is very important to do that and you know to, to secure our southern border. Uh, it's a big issue in South Texas. And it's something that we absolutely have to do since the uh, current administration in Washington refuses to do so. So that's what I'm bringing to the table. It's an incredible opportunity here um, as a Hispanic uh, Republican to move our, our uh, well, to represent our South Texas values. And it's never been done before. And we are in an incredible position to do that this November 8th. You know, you say something very interesting. You talk about the party of your grandparents and your parents, which was JFK and maybe even into LBJ. You know, as I was driving uh, the bus through our bus tour with uh, Chingo Bling, we drove through Catula, Texas. And I remember LBJ taught in Catula, Texas. And, uh, you know, one of the things that motivated LBJ, and regardless of the policies of the Great Society, what inspired and moved LBJ was the poverty of the Latino, Hispanic, Mexican Americans in South Texas. And that's honorable. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, wanting to improve people's lives is honorable. That was the party of JFK. That was the party of LBJ in Texas. But that party, as you mentioned, Adam, has long, long left us. And Latinos are like, what the heck? Now, we have a set of Latinos that are the old 1950s, 1960s, still stuck in, you know, uh, the, the movement, so to speak, right? When there was, there was no question about it. Let's not deny history. Uh, African Americans and Mexicans and Mexican Americans were poorly treated in Texas. There's no doubt. But, but that was the 50s and 60s. We're, we're going into 2023 and things have changed. That's what people don't realize. I don't That's understand right. how the Democratic Party is stuck in that era that thinks, that thinks that Hispanics are like African Americans. We're not. First of all, there's a lot of diversity in the, in the Hispanic community. And, and with respect to American, African Americans, they have a shared traumatic experience. And that is slavery. And it's horrible. But, you know, they're trying to apply what they've done to the American, African American community, to the Latino community. And it ain't working. It's not working. It's not working anymore for the African-American community. And it's certainly not working for the Latino community. And that's what people don't understand. I've never seen a party misread an ethnic group in the United States more, you know, horribly than the Democratic Party. But that benefits us. And so that, you know, because I get this question all around the state of Texas. What's making this shift? What's causing this realignment? That's it. Adam started it. He talked about the party of JFK, and I'm talking about the party of LBJ. Folks, they left. That, that, that wing of the party left us a long time ago, so I'm glad you brought it up. Listen, you're an attractive candidate. I sure hope that you are going to be elected. I'm confident you will because of all of the hard work that's going on in South Texas. And as Andrea likes to say, what's your call to action? What can people do to help Adam Hinojosa win the Senate seat in Texas? Well, we're seeing it. Obviously, the main thing is to get out and vote and vote your South Texas values. It is so absolutely important. You know, just like you said, we we as parents, we as small business owners, we're tired of, of uh, as a parent being, you know, the, the radical woke agenda that's being force fed down our throats. Uh, we're tired as small business owners is just being overtaxed, over regulated. We're tired of, of struggling so much to make ends meet. And so economic opportunity for all of South Texas, and which is uh, a big majority of Hispanic uh, population. And so, you know, if we want economic opportunity, we've got to do something different. We've got to go forward with uh, with with our strong principles, uh, belief in our, our God. You know, we're not beholden to any party. We're, we're beholden to our father in heaven. 
And as long as we maintain those South Texas values, then we can never go wrong. And, and thank God right now, the Republican Party is supporting that and supporting that effort. It's incumbent upon us as candidates, Hispanic candidates, to, to, to pound that message and to make, uh, you know, help our people wake up and see that the Democrat Party has long left us behind. So it's so important to get out and vote your South Texas values. I look forward to it. And it would be my honor to serve as your next state senator in District 27. Well, you're a stellar candidate. I'm extremely proud of you. Uh, Godspeed and uh, looking forward to calling you <laughs> senator-elect on Wednesday morning. Take care, Adam. God bless. Adam, God thank you. you. And I will say not just the South Texas values, I will say just our values, our family values, our faith values. Because, you know, I'm not from South Texas, but I I feel that I am from Texas. But you've spent enough time in South Texas. Well, yeah, I and, used to and, I and, used to live in Laredo, Texas for three years, and I was a reporter over there. And, you but know, I mean, the transformation is amazing. It's amazing. And the people over there, it's beautiful. I fall in love with Laredo. People were, that never been in that area were asking me, like, what are you doing over there? I said, you know what? I fall in love with Laredo, not just because of Laredo. It's the people from Laredo, the people from from South Texas. They're amazing people. I love them. They're like, they have humilde, so humilde. hardworking, mm -hmm. family oriented, Correct. patriotic, God loving. They always treat you And they well. fly. I've never seen more American and Texas flags being flown than in yeah, South Texas. Correct. <laughs> it's and amazing. you know what? And I, I was saying, I'm from Colombia. They were immediately, what do you need? How we can help you? I mean, they were like, I mean, very warm people. I love them. Yep. So now uh, we're going to go with the uh, Dominican Republic, I think. Thank Lena, you. you are. Thank you, Adam. Bye-bye. You are. Um, I was reading the comments. People were like, yeah, Dominicana. Right, Lena? Sí, yes, yes. Ah, Dominicana. No, not. See, this is the beauty of our party. Everybody. That's why I, ha I, I, I want a still mark of that picture of everybody at the beginning, because I'm going to post it on fa my Facebook page. That is what America doesn't understand, that they think, and I'm going to be very blunt, when they think of Hispanics in the United States, they think of uh, people of Mexican descent, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. And Lena, you and I are going to talk about this, because when I tell people that the Hispanic world, the Hispanic community, the Latino world, whatever you want to call us, we're as diverse as America. We're, we're, we're black, we're Caucasian, we're Asian, we, we are Creole, we're mestizos, we're indigenous people of the Americas. I mean, we got it all. And, 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 and people don't understand that concept. And of course, to the left, to the Democrats, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking that, you know, uh, uh, a woman from the, from the Dominican Republic is a conservative Republican. And explain to the world that's watching you right now, why are you a conservative? What made you run for office? And I'll tell you, Lena's got a very neat story because after you finish telling us those two questions I asked you, I want you to tell people whose airplane you used to schedule for maintenance. I know, at I Boeing. was reading here. <laughs> it's an amazing story. <laughs> so tell us the story of Lena. Awesome. Well, th first of all, thank you for having me here. It is uh, a true privilege just to uh, be in the audience and to hear, you know, from John, Adam, and I, I know it's going to be exciting just to hear from Amanda. So, um, so on your, on your question, you know, it's the reason I, you know, I was raised conservative, you know, when, um, my family, when I, I moved here when I was seven years old from the Dominican Republic, that is the values that I was raised for uh, to follow God, family, and, you know, be, have that pride for the country. And that has always been, you know, my calling, but in, when you look at the news, when you look at everything else, you know, I was told I, I am not conservative. I was told that I had to believe in a certain way. I was told by the, you know, mass media, by everyone that uh, as Latina, I had to believe a certain way, but that was not it. You know, that was not the way that I was raised. I was raised to, you know, um, have respect, have grit, you know, work mm -hmm. hard for things. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what I did. And that is why I'm just fed up with the current policies, the current way that the country is going. In my area, Bear, uh, the precinct one of Bear County, we have been left behind time and time again. We have never had a conservative candidate um, that have actually won in this position, and we have seen it. We have dirt roads. Coming from the Dominican Republic, there is 
you know, in out in the countryside in the Dominican Republic, we have roads that are paved. Here in Bear County in the United States, we should not have that. And that is failed policies year after year, and I'm tired of it. And that's why I'm standing up to run for Bear County Commissioner, because I know I can drive a change. And yes, tiempo, we need change. Lina, so tell, tell, tell me, because I, I, so many candidates that lately we've been having in the show, they don't have any political background. They're just citizens that they have, you know, regular jobs or they're business owners. By and, the way, that's the best kind of candidate. I know, I know. But, you know, you normally, I mean, back in, in the day, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you, sh you, you didn't see that much. But now it's like an explosion. It's like, you know what? We need to do something because if we don't step in, um, I don't know where is this country is going to go. And as you say, you're an immigrant from Dominican Republic. I am an immigrant from Colombia. I love this country as much as I love my own country. To me, this is my country. This is my home. This is the, the place that it gives me not only opportunities, but I'm raising my kids in this country. So, of course, I love this country. And that's part of uh, what I'm doing or what we're doing here in TLC with Orlando and, and all of you guys. So tell me... Um, your background in that, I mean, you, you, when you decide to run for office and why that position? Yeah, so I'll give you, you know, so my background, I started, um, you know, after school, I went to study aviation. So I took a very non-traditional role in my, um, in my career and went into aerospace, which a lot of girls, especially Latinos, don't go into that. So, um, you know, non-traditional school, I went to a technical, um, did a technical education, you know, because we didn't have that money and I took out loans and then I got hired with a company that I've been with over 15 years, uh, the, one of the top manufacturer in aviation and have worked myself again, what I mentioned, you know, just have that faith and have grit. I worked myself from an aircraft mechanic all the way to a supply chain leader where I now manage all government programs across the United States. Mm -hmm. So um, I have people boots on ground, making sure that um, our most important assets in our country are uh, deployable and have everything they need at the time that they need. So that is the experience there is something that can easily, you know, relate to what I'm running, which is Bear County Commissioner, which is you drive budgets, you drive uh, complex projects and very high important programs, right? So a lot of them, especially we have seen it on the news, when we have to go and take our military out from a certain area, my team is in the forefront, making sure they have everything that they need, making sure that our soldiers come home safe. So in this role, as Bear County Commissioner, we should have strong leaders that know and have experience in how to drive long range planning, how to ensure that we have a budget that said, how can they drive multiple complex projects and be successful in driving? And that is uh, driving the people to be, you know, to execute. And that is the piece that I feel like is missing. We don't have the right leadership that have gone, you know, we have politicians, right, that have gone and, and done their job as, as politicians, but none that have cared about the actual individuals, the people, the content, you know, the individuals that are living there, that are hard workers, you know, the Latinos that, you know, are getting up early in the morning to make sure that there's food in their plate. We have individuals that don't understand that. And I am one of those that, you know, went from nothing to become something on hard work. And those are the type of individuals that we need in office to make sure that the policies that they're setting in place are the policies that are going to directly impact the people that live in their, in those areas. Would you agree that is with that me? experience that I bring over 15 years. Would you agree with me and, that, and that I think I'm having some connection issues. Uh, okay. Can you hear, can you hear me? Okay. I can now. I said, would you agree with me? Because you made that statement that you went from nothing to something. I mean, everybody's something, but I think what you meant is materialistically and in terms of education and career. But let me tell you only in America, only in America do us immigrants who take advantage of the opportunities provided for us by the generosity of the taxpayers and the good Americans allow us to come here with nothing, as my father did. Because I tell this story in 1962 
When I came to Houston, Lena, we slept on donated mattresses. We came from a communist country with nothing. And, you know, to look at myself and having come within a hair of becoming mayor of the fourth largest city in America, being the first Hispanic immigrant ever elected countywide and citywide in Houston and Harris County, only in America does that happen. And I'm so proud to hear you say that. You came here like me with nothing, and now you are in charge of a very important branch of your company, which is Boeing, as I understand, doing some very important work. And I don't know that you can, you know, share a lot, but you did mention that you do a lot to keep our military aircraft on the air, in, in the sky when we have to mobilize. But I think you told me a story, and I don't know if you can share it. If you can't, that's fine. But you also had a very important client. Are you able to share that with us? I, I am not able to give you a lot of details uh, on the phone. But yes, I before this role, I was an operations manager, and I served our the highest asset in our Air Force um, in, in you know the VIP aircrafts. I was responsible for in, ensuring that those aircraft were in the air, saved, and that the individuals you know in our country that flew there were um, were saved at all times. So right. you know, so I, I've had a lot of um, opportunities, and, and like you said, only in America can you have that American dream where you can you know start with nothing, right? A materialistic start with nothing, and you can make something of yourself if you have that grit, that wanting to go work and just dedicate yourself. So yes, there is other countries that are, you know, say they're welcoming, but their policies do not drive that. And here in America, you can you can do it. You can make a change. And just in pol in politics or in the government, if you don't agree with something, you have the power and the voice to speak up. Your vote makes a difference, which is a thing that uh, in the Latino community, I've heard it time and time again. You know, our vote doesn't count. We we don't make a difference. Yes, we do. Our voice counts. We when we go into that poll, when we go into that polling location and we cast a vote, our vote counts just like any other American in the United States. So we need to make sure our voice is heard. It's time to stop, you know, leaving, oh, they're gonna pick whoever they want. It's time to leave that behind and to step up and go and vote for your values. Go vote for what we believe in. And, and like you mentioned, Orlando. The Latino community is very diverse, but we do have one thing in common. We have faith as number one, our family mm -hmm. as number two is more important. And we have a love for the country. We know what we, all the benefits that we receive from being here in this country. So we need to make sure that we are going and voting, Republican vo voting on our values. And we have great candidates here, but there's a lot of other candidates, Latino candidates, that are out there making a difference that we need to make sure we're supporting this November the 8th. I thought I got to tell you, I'm going to let Andrea talk here for just a minute, but I'm thinking of the liberal left, you know, and I was obviously we're in the World Series and the Houston Astros, whom I hope you're pulling for, Lena, yes, I uh, uh, are in the series. But I think it was ESPN or one of the liberal, you know, woke left wrote an article that this is the first time there are no African-Americans in the World Series. And I'm thinking to myself, how stupid can they be some of the greatest players are black players that come from the americas what are these people thinking i mean this is how 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 woke they are now they want to go after major league baseball because there are no african americans in the world series i mean the skipper of the houston astros dusty baker was one of the greatest <laughs> baseball players Last time I looked, he was African-American from the United States. But the liberal left fails to realize that we have other blacks from the Americas, right? I mean, it's not—the United States doesn't just make up the Americas. It's South America. It's Central America. You know, we have the Americas. And, you know, those ignorant statements is what the left does to try <coughs> to divide us. I mean, it's— ridiculous. And I say that to you because I'm sure coming from the Dominican Republic, you are a huge baseball fan because some oh, yeah. of the greatest baseball players, first of all, the the best ever come from Cuba. 
But then the Dominican <laughs> Republic, then Venezuela, Venezuela, then we have some, you know, Mexicans, and of course, then there are uh, our U.S. No, I, I'm kidding. I don't want to be like the left. We have great baseball players. But the absurdity of that statement, what do you think about that, that there are no African-Americans in the World Series? <laughs> I'm just going to laugh at that one. Um, we're going to leave the, uh, the the goals of, you know, Cubans on top. We're not going to go into that discussion, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, no, 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 no. With him, party. you're never going to win. <laughs> but, you know, but I, I honestly, I've heard this. Time and time again, not only in baseball, but, uh, you know, being in corporate America and others, you, you know, when I come to, um, to a meeting and just talk Spanish, it's like, oh, you're not supposed to talk Spanish. Where did you learn it? You know, th there is a misconception. And I, mm -hmm. and again, I believe that misconception comes from, um, you know, on TV, we, we now are doing a better, um, job of, uh, incorporating and discussing the different, um, backgrounds that people come from. But for many, many years, if you look at the novelas or the Latino, um, the Latino shows, you always want to have somebody that is lighter skin, fairer skin, right? Even in Dominican Republic, when you put the news, you want to have somebody that's lighter or fair skin. And that has directly impacted the way that we see who a Latino is and who is uh, somebody from different location because we have done a bad job of expressing everybody and it, ev that everybody comes in different colors and shades, um, whether they're Latinos or, uh, you know, African-Americans, because even now you have African-Americans that are mixed and they might look, you know, lighter, but they're still African-Americans. So we cannot go by the color of the skin or by the language they speak to be able to, um, say whether that person is uh, capable or not capable to do something. Everybody is capable of Absolutely. reaching and uh, reaching different goals and doing different things. We cannot label individuals by the way that they look. And, and, and that you know, is Amanda, that's what I love about our party, the Republican Party. We're not. We, Lena, we're, Lena. I'm <laughs> Amanda's, Lena. Coming. Amanda's coming. <laughs> Lena, we the, the left is so fixated on separating us and and. And Republicans, conservatives, we don't care who you are, where you come from, what language you speak. I mean, you're just if you you're of our if values. you're an American, you're an American. That's what we look at, right? We, I, I look at everybody as an American. I never look at them by race, ethnicity, gender. It's an American. And something that we don't um, that we don't do is we don't take this country for granted because we know, we know firsthand what is going on in Latin America, and that's why we're here because this is the land of opportunities. And I love this country so much. And I also brought my parents, I, I have my kids here, and I will never think or cross to my mind that I will go back and live in my country as, as much as I love my country, but I don't wanna live there. Especially right. especially now with the with the new president. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to Amanda, uh, Lena. Uh, um, uh, Call to action, what? Lena. Call to action. So es tiempo de cambio. You know, we need better leaders out in the local, not only in the, you know, state or federal level, in the local elections, we need better leadership. You know, we're tired of uh, getting um, told what we need to think and how we have to vote. We need better leadership. And right now, we conservative, but go vote on your values and make sure that you vote Republican because we need those leaders to make and drive change. God bless you. We wish you the very best. Let me tell you, I'm going to I'm gonna say something. We're going to be heavily involved in your race. So we're looking Thank forward to working it. with you. All right. Lina, Thank gracias. you. God bless. And now Lina. we're going to go to Amanda. All Finally. Right. <laughs> well, why don't you introduce Amanda? <laughs> so Amanda, we just recently, I just recently met her. I don't know about you. You, you just met her too? I know everybody. Oh, okay. Well, it ain't my first rodeo. Oh, I, we know that. As I should have wore my T-shirt. I know. You need to bring it next time. Well, I just met Amanda during the bus tour with Chingo Blaine, and we stopped in Alice, Texas, in Jim Wells County. I, I didn't even know that we have an Alice, Texas, and I didn't know about the Jim Wells County. And by the way, I didn't know that it was the birthplace of Tejano music. January 6th, they have an annual event celebrating Tejano music. But go ahead. Didn't even know either. So here is Amanda and I'm going. Sue. <laughs> of course you of course you will. Amanda Sue Frederick. And she is a candidate for Jim Wells County Judge. Amanda, bienvenida. Welcome to TLC. 
Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to um, representing our citizens here in Jim Wills County. And thank you so much for stopping by the um, on Friday. I know that there was a lot of talk over the weekend and they were so excited that somebody stopped and actually paid attention to our community. And it means a lot to our citizens and our organizations and our government here in Jim Wells. And the Republican Party headquarters is also new, right? Yes. So this is our first time ever in history that the Jim Wells County Republican Party actually has an establishment, a home um, here and based out of Alice, Texas. Alice, Texas is our biggest um, city in Jim Wells County, and it's right in the center. So it's a great location for everybody to locate from the north, east, south and west sides to come and centralize and um, join doing research, doing um, education, learning about campaigning, learning about local politics or state or federal. Um, even now we have possibilities of offering internships and who knows what the opportunities are going to have after this year. Uh, Amanda, something that it got my attention when we visit uh, the headquarters, when we visit you guys and, and I met mm -hmm. you, you were talking about the statistics of the population that is getting le uh, less and less and less for the lack of opportunities. So tell me about that. And I think it's one of the motivations that it got you running for this position. Yes, absolutely. So our census in 2020 came up with the data. Uh, we were above 40,000, around 41, 42,000. Now we're under 38,000 going towards that 37,000 population. Even our city, our biggest population here in Alice, Texas, was over the 20,000 um, population. Now uh, attending the state of the city and hearing that we're under 18,000, that's a significant drop. So with the statistics is showing that Jim Wells County overall has decreased over 5% where the state of Texas actually has increased 17%. So we're trying to figure out what is going on with these last um, administrations, the last 10 years, why are people leaving? And we want to make sure that not only people stop leaving, but no more people come into Jim Wells County. Well, let me tell you, uh, I have a suspicion. And I'll t uh, after we left the party headquarters, Amanda, on Friday, we uh, had lunch at the district which is, I guess, a popular restaurant in Alice, and uh, we were on a podcast, and we visited with the owner of the district and uh, some of the customers there. I can tell you, for example, that it's the policies of the Democrats that kill jobs in Texas, and particularly in rural Texas. I can tell you that stopping a pipeline that was being constructed across the United States would have created thousands of jobs across the United States and into Texas. I can tell you that the oil and gas industry has lifted the lives of so many Mexican-Americans in South Texas, Hispanics, Tejanos, whatever you want to call us. They are the ones that are working in that industry are making tons of money. Uh, mm -hmm. I found out today that my sister is in the trucking business. She and her husband operate a small family trucking business. And he was telling me that Walmart is offering a 126-figure salary, $120,000 for truck drivers. Wow. But now, now we hear about the Department of Transportation has, has descended upon Texas to issue citations and harass and hassle the Texas truckers. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not like, you know, our DPS was doing a good job. Our Houston Police Department had a truck enforcement. And, yes, trucks are big vehicles, and they need to be inspected. But harassment through over uh, regulation is killing jobs. So the Democrats are killing jobs in the energy sector. Many of our troqueros that carry flatbeds, if you see them in Texas hauling pipe out to the oil field yeah. sites or hauling mud or hauling products, those jobs are being killed. And if that weren't enough, now the deep United States Department of Transportation is in Texas with over regulation killing trucking jobs. That's mm -hmm. how that happens. Uh, Amanda, it, 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 it's it, and you know it's the good people of Alice, it's the good people of Star County, it's the good people of Maverick County that are suffering the consequences. And I hope that when you're elected county judge, you can engage in some real economic development with some good entrepreneurial uh, uh, background and policies that will bring investments back to your county. Absolutely, and as a small but local business owner myself. 
Um, right now, I'm actually in a PhD pro program with Liberty University studying government and public policy, and my focus is on economic policy. We learn from a biblical perspective about how everything in our livelihood comes from our faith, our family, and our freedom values, as well as our government system from the local, the state, and the federal government. Um, everything is kind of trickled down to one opportunity or lack of, and it comes when it, um, dealing with our economic policy. So being a voice for the economic development here in Jim Wells County, um, trying to get new investors in, being proactive is super important to me as a community advocate. That's what I'm really good at. That's one of my really strong points um, and that I continue to do that every single day. I tell people all the time, it's going to take you to voice for your concerns. I will be standing right next to you. The, to, the larger the line of communication, the better, the stronger, making sure that not only our cities, our water boards, our school districts are in functioning, but as well as having a good balanced relationship with the state and federal government to say, hey, we're Jim Wells County and we're just as important as anybody else. And we are slabbed right in the middle of South Texas. So we are two hours from San Antonio, two hours from the Valley at 45 minutes from Corpus, an hour and a half from Laredo. So we are like that right in that marker of a prime location where we want to shine that light to um, not just South Texas, but all of Texas in the United States to say, we can do it. So can you. Hey, uh, so I asked the, uh, the organizers of the Tejano festival that's coming up, I guess, January 6th and Alice, right? Yes, sir. Uh, if, if we could have an opportunity to sponsor. So I want to hook up with you and TLC and the Jim Wells County Republican Party is going to have a big booth, a big presence where we're going to talk to all the Tejanos about our values and making sure that they're registered to vote and that they vote their values. And if they've had enough and they want economic opportunity, upward mobility, that's what the conservative businessmen, capitalists, freedom loving uh, Republicans are are bringing to these communities. So I want to talk to you about that, but I want to make sure we're also going to bring some folks from Houston who love Tejano music down there. And I, I've never, you know, I've never done the Tejano Music Festival in Alice, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So Tejano music is the heart and soul of the city of Alice as well. It's a big impact for Jim Wells County. Uh, working with people like Ruben Lopez, um, who is the head of that organization. He has a location, a museum. It has a lot of history in a downtown area. So if you guys want to come down, I'm sure he can coordinate a visit with you guys. Um, I know when I spoke with him over the weekend, he was very happy, very pleased, and very um, feeling good that someone welcome. And that's what I told him. I go, we've always been here. We live our life with our values. We are part of the community. Um, and we want to join and represent all of our values here. And as in this area as being a, a first generation American, uh, my father's from Mexico and my grandfather, you know, and my grandmother from Mexico voted for me. You know, so it's like those are the American dreams. And what we're trying to do is keep our culture so our legacies, like my children, um, can be proud and showing their heritage and continue forth and choose what they want to do in life and have the opportunities there for them and also the choice of making new ones as well. Let me ask you a question. Is there enough hotel capacity to accommodate visitors to Alice if they come to the Tejano uh, Festival in January? Yeah, so there is hotels. Uh, we have hotels on 44, on Highway 44 as well, 281. Um, there, there is um, facilities that can host people, um, you know, and that's another thing too. If we get more attraction, if we get more investors wanting to come and build our economic development, that's an uh, that's a um, an outlet that we can look into is literally growing the city of Alice, growing where. Um, and coordinating with Orange Grove, coordinating with Ben Bolts, Fremont, you know, parts of San Diego, all the way going to Nueces County, going to Brooks County, going to Duval County, and going up on the north end to Live Oak County. I tell people we have to connect kind of like a Lego piece because the thing is our rural areas are so united. They do a lot of business with each other. Um, and then they also help with the businesses that are in those bigger areas. They need us as much as we need them. 
And as the next county judge, that's something that I will definitely be voicing for because I'm not scared to voice for our citizens. I did not enter this race for myself. Um, like I said, I'm good where I'm at, but my thing is that our local government um, has not been at par, has never been at par, because when you see a significant drop of population and when you look at the census, you can't lie about that data. That's the truth. Well, uh, on January 6th, you will be county judge of Jim Wells County. And uh, let me just say that I'm going to work diligently to make sure that we have sufficient corporate sponsors for the Tejano Festival. Uh, we're going to fill your hotel rooms. We're going to bring people from around the state. I'd like to hire, uh, hire. Uh, I'd like to have a, a great Tejano band or two perform there. So I want to work with you and the promoters uh, to make this a success and bring our friends and neighbors from Houston and Harris County and surrounding areas in Fort Bend County down to Jim Wells because um, this this is something cultural that needs to be saved. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, Amanda, yes. but last legislative session, Texas Latino conservatives petitioned the legislature and for the first time ever passed a resolution that the governor signed that makes every April 4th in Texas Tejano Day mm -hmm. in Texas. Honoring the yeah, I believe I shared on social media about that. I was all excited. <laughs> okay, good. So, so we want to make sure we get that, keep that Tejano culture growing and and going in Texas because, you know, it's so much part of the history of Texas, and uh, I'm just looking forward to January. But for that, we need to elect Amanda. So two more days for early voting, and on Tuesday it's elections day. So we need to encourage everybody all the neighbors, all the families to go and vote. So Amanda, uh, call to action. Yeah, so we need everybody. This is the nitty gritty guys. We need your friends. We need your family. Vote your values. Learn about the candidates and what they represent, what they bring to the table. If you can't find them, talk to your friends and family. You know, I tell people, if you can't find me, I'm always at our business Silver Star Food Stores on the south side of Alice or probably HEB because I got three kids. Um, I am not a politician. I am a normal wife and mother and daughter of the community that just wants the betterment of our families, uh, better of our communities and have that opportunity that we've never been approached. And I want to give it to our citizens because they definitely deserve it. Um, please go out and vote. Remember to go votetexas.gov if you're questioning your uh, active status, you need that photo ID or your uh, voter's registration card. Um, talk to the Elections Administration if you have any questions or get with our chair, Charlie Raglan, as well. He's really proactive. Uh, we want to make sure we have secure elections. Uh, we want to make sure that our we have fair elections as well. And I humbly ask for your support. My name is Amanda Sue Friedrich, and I'm running proudly as the first Hispanic woman to run for Jim Wells County um, judge ever in history. We're and Amanda, and I'm going to say, you're just not, because you say, I, I'm just a, a wife. I'm just a mother. No, no, you are a wonder woman as we are as a moms as wives as the mm -hmm. center of the family because the family is the base of our society so you are a concerned citizen and what you're doing is amazing and we are here in texas latino conservatives supporting you and we're going to continue supporting you and we want everybody just please if you are watching this show uh, your friends your family share in your uh, facebook pages and spread the word and go and vote for Amanda. Thank yeah, you. and, uh, you know, I said long time ago, and it's documented, <laughs> that Texas Hispanics would keep Texas conservative. And uh, that was a prediction I made about an, a year and a half ago on one of the programs. Remember, before we had this fancy studio. Oh, I know. We, that we were doing a very, producer, Mark, <laughs> very, um, uh, and, 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 and what's sh surprising to me is the Hispanic woman has stepped up to lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have great candidates like John Lujan and Mark LaHood. And, you know, at one time we had Orlando Sanchez. But the idea that the, <laughs> the, these women are stepping up, like Lena and like Amanda and like the triple threat. People, you know, we call them the triple threat. That's Cassie Garcia, mm -hmm. Monica de la Cruz, and Maida Flores. Not only are they beautiful ladies, uh, but uh, they are 
extremely, Look, I'm taking a picture now with this Extremely intelligent. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, as, as a Texan, I'm so proud of these ladies. Uh, all of you. Uh, Lena's still on. Look at that smile. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> we... Uh, we, we wish you the very best. We're going to be heavily involved in, in, in your races and help you out, and uh, we look forward to calling you commissioner and county judge. So God bless you. Thank you for taking time, and everybody, go vote. If you want to make a contribution to these ladies that are working very hard, you go to their website. You can contribute $5. You can contribute $2. $5 buys a lot of stamps. It might buy them another you know yard sign. Give them some help. They need it. They deserve it. They're great candidates, and they're going to keep Texas the shining star that it is in the union. Raúl, y las estaremos apoyando estas elecciones el próximo martes. Así que uh, I want to do it on, on Wednesday when we have our show again. Uh, we want to have their pictures saying, like, they're the winners. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, remember, we are an organization that depends on the generosity of Texans to keep us going. Uh, these bus tours, these concerts, the support we give the candidates, the mail pieces, the texts we do, the television commercials, the radio spots we do, this studio, none of this is cheap. It costs a lot of money, but it is paying dividends. This is at what we call in the banking interest an ROI, a return on investment. Mm -hmm. So, If you make a contribution to Texas Latino Conservatives, it will increase our ROI, our return on the investment. What's what's the return? These great candidates that you saw today. That we also invest on them. Hispanics from across the state of Texas, of every race, of every uh, you know country, uh, all patriots of of, of America. Uh, some of us are immigrants, some of us are naturalized citizens, some of us are fourth generation Texans known as Tejanos. It doesn't matter. We love Texas. We're patriotic. We want to serve. We need the resources. The money that you invest in Texas Latino conservatives is almost 100% reinvested in helping these candidates. So if you want to keep Texas red, you want to keep Texas entrepreneurial, you want to keep Texas conservative, You want to make sure that the woke community from Boston and New York and Connecticut don't walk come away. here. Walk away. Come <laughs> from join our, us. From our state. We will keep up the fight. Thank you for tuning in. Godspeed. God bless. And if you like this show and if you like what you saw today, like us and share this video. See you guys next Wednesday. Los vemos el próximo miércoles. Y visiten With nuestra... all of our victories. Of course, it's going to be the day after elections. So visit TexasLatinoConservatives.com, TexasLatinoConservatives.com, and see you guys next Wednesday. Y suerte para todos los candidatos. Y estaremos súper pendientes. Yo ya voté. ¿Tú ya votaste? Ya voté. Ok, perfecto. Nos vemos el próximo miércoles.